Hello and welcome to another edition of Sparky Help. This time we're going to look at initial verification and more specifically this schedule of inspections. For obvious reasons this is quite a long one so I'll be broken up into parts as you can see below. So please like, share and subscribe to help me make these videos in the future. Many thanks. So let's continue with circuits. Then we go down to the circuits themselves, adequacy of conductors for current carrying capacity. This links in previous one um, where the breaker again, the conductor was wrong. It could be the breaker was right, but the cable was wrong. So without further investigation, you know, you, you're left in limbo there. So you'd have to find out if it's your job to do so. But you're just making sure that it meets the requirements um, that has been installed. And also the load, if you've got an 8 kilowatt shower, that you've got an appropriate size cable supplying it, or electric vehicle, or whatever it happens to be. But hopefully the designer has done that, and you're checking this against the design information. Cable installation methods suitable for location and external influences. So have, you know, if we've got twin and earth, clip direct to the wall, and it's within a machine workshop, would you think that's acceptable? It would pass, it would test, okay, in that sense it would pass, but actually... Is it the most suitable cable for that environment? Probably not, and therefore you might well recommend it gets changed or not pass it, depending on your point of view. It might be damaged already. So it's about whatever's been installed. Is it suitable for that location? With regards to external influences, well, it comes back to the IP ratings again. So if it's a really dusty environment, has all the equipment been installed suitable for dusty environments? Or if it's a wet location, or, or whatever it happens to be. So whatever has been installed, is it suitable for it? Make the decision. Hopefully it will be a yes. Segregation of band one and band two, so that's low voltage and extra low voltage, so that's your data and your power and your telephones and anything else that you may well have. Has it been segregated? Have you been kept the sufficient distance apart? And if it has crossed, has it crossed appropriately? If you've got them and you know, you have think in a domestic installation, you will have telephones, you may even put data in, uh, you'll have coaxes. Are they sufficient distance away from all the mains cabling? Uh, hopefully it would be a tick in that case. It's cables correctly erected and supported throughout with protection against abrasion. So that does exactly what it says on the tin. Is all the equipment installed correct and correctly supported? And against abrasion. So if we look here, going into an accessory, there's no grommet. It probably fails on the IP rating, as so you probably get your finger in there. But that sort of thing would you'd need to pick up on. But let's go for a tick. Provision of fire barriers, ceiling arrangements where necessary. So we're talking about going through walls and things like that, and floors specifically. Um, that would need ceiling. It's 710 mil squared. Anything smaller than that, and you don't need to seal. But otherwise, it would need ceiling. So intumescent sealing um, th around that to stop the spread of fire. Um, and also where you pass through floors, walls. Non-sheave cables enclosed throughout in conduit, ducting or trunking. So that's single core cables, not sheathed. Okay, so normal stuff to go in conduit. Has it been put in an enclosure of some description? If it's not, I can't think where I've, I've ever seen it, but I'm sure probably people have. If it's not, then it's wrong. Uh, it needs to be in some sort of enclosure throughout. Cables concealed under floors, above ceilings, in walls, partition, adequately protected against damage. So we're talking about zones in walls here. Okay, so if you've got an accessory, the zone is vertical and horizontal. We could also go up in the corner of the room. We can go around where the coving would go, 150 mil down. If we put cables in those locations, then you don't necessarily need to protect it. You might want to, but you don't necessarily need to. But if you go outside of those zones, then you'd need to require protection, at least 50 mil. OK, so um, you're looking at your zones. If the wall, incidentally, is 100 mil or less in thickness, the zones transfer also to the other side of the wall. OK, so vertical and horizontal of those zones. Conductors correctly identified by colour, lettering or number. So on here, we've got a three plate ceiling rose. We can see neutrals on the bottom there. We can see the earth, obviously, and we can see the loops in the middle, which is the three plate part. But we can see another blue, which would be the switch line going to the brown of the flex and it has no sleeving on. So that would be a fail. Likewise, if you went to two way switching and they'd use a three core on earth, the two of the other cores, obviously not apart from the brown one, the black and the grey, need to be sleeved brown. And if they're all the same colour for three phase, they need to be L1, L2 and L3 to be labelled. Presence, adequacy and correct termination of protective conductor. Has it been? So is it correctly connected or anything else really? Um, does it meet the requirements? So that's fairly bad. We've not only got a loose connection there, but also there's no sleeving 
on the actual CPC, so that would need looking at. But hopefully if you went around and rectified it, if you did it, it would be okay. Cables and conductors correctly connected, enclosed, and within with no undue mechanical strain. So hopefully that would be the case, so no cables too tight to bend, uh, you're keeping within the bending radius, and they're all connected correctly, as per the manufacturer's instructions and whatever it happens to be. And if you've got cord grip, so if we go back and look at that ceiling rose, back to that one, you can see that the cord, the flex, is round the cord grips, taking the weight. So if that wasn't on that, then you'd be making sure that it is. And likewise in the lamp holder as well, that they're not supported by the terminations. So hopefully that would be a tick. No basic insulation or conductor visible outside the enclosure. So basic insulation is the brown blue actual insulation on the cable. So that would not be good because it's outside of the enclosure. So that's not acceptable. That would have to be rectified. But let's go for a tick. Let's assume it has been. Single pole devices for switching or protection in line conductors only. Well, that's a, more of a visual thing. It can be a testing, but obviously this is a visual thing. We're making sure that the switches have got the line conductor, and you can see that's the case. Obviously, if you wired all of this, you know all this anyway, because you've hopefully you did it as you went along, but you're about checking it. Accessories not damaged, securely fixed, correctly connected, suitable for external influences. So all the accessories, everything you've fitted, does it meet that requirement? Is it securely fixed? Or if you slam the door, will it fall off the wall? If it's going to do that, go back and put some more grip fill on it. Um, what other, other sticky substances are available, but securely fixed. And external influences, again, about being suitable for the location it is installed in. Then we're back to this 8.14 again, and it's where you've actually got RCDs, what circuits have actually got on. So the chance are it's going to be sockets. You may have equipment for outdoors. You might put sockets for outdoors, so you might have done that, so that will be RCD'd. You may well have cables in the wall, but you might not have a metal structure within the wall, so that wouldn't have to worry about that one. But you'll probably have an RCD on your domestic lighting, so that will be a tick. Okay, so that's pretty much what you'd be going for down there, hopefully. Moving over, presence and appropriate devices for isolation and switching, correctly located. So means of switching off for mechanical maintenance. Sounds quite dramatic, sounds quite commercial and industrial, really, but it isn't. It's just about can you actually switch things off? So an immersion heater, for instance, can you put, have you put an isolator next to it? Which you would have done. Cookers, have you put an isolator switch so we can turn it off and is it within the correct distance? So it's all of those things. So people, if they need to clean them, it's for non-skilled people to be able to go and correct it. Can they do it and can they safely isolate it? Emergency switching is our next one. So emergency switching, have you put these within the building anywhere or anything like that? Doesn't have to be looking like this, but this, this is what you've got. So have you got emergency switching or is it required? Domestic installation, probably NI, I should imagine, but who knows? Functional switching for control of the installation and current using equipment. Well, that's just any switch that turns things on and off, okay? Which pretty much every installation is going to have. And is it appropriate? And does it do it? Does it do the thing you want it to do? So, yes. Firefighter switch does exactly what it says on the tin. Goes into your local garage um, and look, for, look at the petrol forecourt. And you will see up 2.75 metres off the ground there or thereabouts. You'll see, not necessarily this one, but you'll see a red switch. That's a firefighter switch. And if you've got those, then it'll be a tick. But domestically, I can't see it happening. But you never know. Current using equipment, permanently connected. Equipment not damaged, securely fixed and suitable for external influences. Hopefully would be a tick. So again, it's the equipment. Is it okay, not damaged, and is it suitable for the environment of which it's been installed? Provision of overload and or under voltage protection for rotating machines. So if you put a rotating machine, a motor, that's basically what that consists of, have you put one of these in or something similar? This will have an overload set in the bottom. If you haven't, don't know what that is, I have a video on how these things work and how the overloads and what they do. I go have a go check it out but have you put these in uh, under voltage is built into these things here so check out my video on that one if you've got it it'll be a tick if you haven't guess what it's going to be an na installed to minimize the buildup of heat and restrict the spread of fire so this is your equipment okay so uh, hopefully that would be a tick but it could be looking at you know it's as simple as your lighting is for example so all lighting we put in we've probably thrown the bit of paper away many times never really read it but it will have a distance how far away from flammable material it must be so that's all we're trying to do we're just trying to meet that if obviously the obvious ones would be things like heaters that you've fitted to the wall are they in a position where they're going to cause a fire if they're not 
then they're a tick. If you have put them in some weather position or someone has now put something next to it after the case, then it needs changing. Okay, so that's hopefully a tick for that one. Adequacy of workspace, accessibility. Well, it goes back to that earlier regulation we looked at about whatever you put in, it must be accessible for future maintenance, repair, testing, whatever it happens to be. So all the equipment, can you be able to do that? Chances are it's going to be a tick. Penultimate two then, uh, you've now got locations containing a bath or shower well most houses have a bath or shower and if you do you'll probably put an rcd in for the low voltage circuits equipment suitable for zones and supplementary bonding where required obviously if you look at the regulations if you put an rcd in, you may not need to put it in if you have you've probably put something in you're gonna have a bathroom it's going to be a tick other part seven special locations so that's anything else from special locations so that's uh, saunas swimming pools uh, you've got agricultural solar panels all of those if any you've got any of those others within an installation then it's going to be a tick if you haven't got anything else apart from the uh, bath or shower then it will be an NA and then ultimately the very last thing you need to do is if as long as all of these are correct or NA then you hit sign and date so please like share and subscribe to help me make these videos in the future many thanks